Welcome to the first module in the Next.js 9 series, where we'll do a quick intro on all the different technologies that make up Next.js. So this is just a little intro section. I will probably end up adding a little more um, images to this. For now, it's very simple and boilerplate just to keep me on task. First up is the main one, that's Next.js. So essentially, if you're not familiar with Next.js or React, I wasn't either. It's a little interesting to get into at first, but if you come from Angular at all or Vue.js, I find it pretty simple to get up and running once you know a couple basic concepts. So we're gonna just scroll through the site a little bit here, just so I can show you around in case you get stuck. Always jump on the Slack channel that we have at hand and you can dive in and ask us any questions you're looking for. First up, the most important thing that I found is they have this awesome learning capability, same as AJMP. Um, but what it does is it, it just walks you very clearly from the Create React app um, all the way through every part and piece of Next.js. So we kind of took all of those tools that I learned from this page, applied a little Firebase knowledge that I've had in the past and linked it all together. Now, if you're not familiar with React, I wasn't, again, uh, this is all new to me. There's just some simple components that we're gonna build out. Um, what you'll probably find a lot of different tutorials now um, have the difference between like a component and a new uh, React.js hook. Definitely dive into that. I'm not gonna dive into it too much in the tutorial, um, what the differences are. For the most part, we're probably gonna need the full component um, in Next.js for what we're utilizing. So a very popular front-end framework for the Next.js, or sorry, for the React community is Material UI. It's based on uh, Google's Material Design, but the components are unbelievably fast. Um, they're easy to use and easy to learn. The greatest part about getting started with the Material UI components, the documentation that they have out here for the version four is fantastic. And I believe that they're doing the components in the correct way, similar tools like Ionic, um, where they're loading the component on demand, and also with the styling. So you can change up the CSS style I will actually show you in our tutorial how to go from like a white basic theme such as this site over to a black or dark theme. They actually have this right here with the uh, color tool, which is super simple to, to pick out and learn from. That's, that's part of the material design you'll find almost everywhere, but it gives you a nice theming capability. Firebase is a backend database. I am a huge Firebase fan. Um, I'm in their alpha program. I've supported them from the days when they weren't part of Google. I'm super excited to see what's going on here. We're actually gonna utilize one of their, probably in my opinion, one of their most popular products being Cloud Firestore. Firestore is a NoSQL database built for global apps, and honestly, it's a fantastic way to get your site up and running quickly. Um, how it keeps in sync with everything is just amazing. There's parts and pieces of the original API um, and how it's structured into different applications that's difficult to stay in sync, but that's where we kind of jump over to the RxJS land. So RxJS is a reactive extension library for JavaScript, and the biggest part about this is the observable. If you're not familiar with observables, I'll touch base on it when we get to that part of the lesson. The way that we're gonna do this is using RxFire. So RxFire is the easiest implement implementation that I found for an RxJS um, utility outside of like Angular's built-in Rx uh, capabilities but it's super simple to use. You can see here, um, there's an example for using the authorization uh, within Firebase. Let's dive down a little bit further here to the database section. 
So it's as simple as this. You can import Firebase. Um, you can get a list type of setting. All you have to do is reference which section of Firestore you're looking for. And next thing you know, you have that full list. It's awesome. They are working on um, a newer package for React, but for now, what I've got tooled out here, it's the basic uh, Firebase RX Fire setup. To kind of understand where we're heading with this um, project, I'll just bring up the app as it sits today. This might get advanced further on as we wanna go through more tutorials. But it's very, very simple. Um, we just want to keep the material UI and show you how to load up a basic uh, sidebar nav. Also with navigation built in, it should... The, the interesting part about some of this no navigation, when you see that little delay, it's actually spinning up some of Google Firebase's cloud functions. And so when that happened, the API hasn't been heavily used, but then we can dive in and these are all details coming from Firebase Firestore. And I'm gonna show you how to run Firebase's admin utility to pump in all of these books and different data. I'm also going to send you through how to set up the books themselves and with page syncs. So if you notice up here what's happening, it's providing this uh, parameterized URL. What's great is I can now refresh and it's gonna hit us right back to this specific um, page from a server-side rendered uh, application with Next.js. And that's the key to all this. We wanna check out the server-side rendering, the lambdas that we're deploying to Firebase, and then how to stay in sync as we start to look at Firestore. Hope you enjoy this lesson. I've learned a lot uh, creating it and Always happy for feedback if you want a pull request or just hit me up on YouTube or the Slack channel. Thanks so much. Don't forget to check out AJ on Perfect Solutions. We're also on dev.to slash AJ as a cross post.